Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Scott Wordley. Today we're going to be talking about problem definition and this is part one of that. So we're going to introduce you to a tool to use to thoroughly define um, the problems that you come across in engineering. It's called an office analysis and in this video we're going to cover the first half of that analysis which includes looking at and defining the objective, the functions and the factors. I'd like to start by introducing you to a very general overview of engineering problems. This is an overview that we're going to come back to many times throughout this subject. The first step in any engineering problem is to sit down and very carefully identify what the real objectives are to make sure that we're proceeding in the right direction. The next step is for us to come up with a range of viable options that we think might be able to solve this problem. From this range of options, we then need to select the best concept using proper engineering metrics. Once we've selected our chosen concept, we then need to develop a detailed solution which may involve a range of calculations and engineering drawings. And once we have this solution in hand, we then need to go out there and communicate this solution. And that could be in a range of methods, either via presentation, a report, or some engineering drawings that we might pass on to the people who are manufacturing our solution or assembling it. So in today's uh, short video, we're going to look at the first step in this process, which is identifying those real objectives, and the tool that we're going to use for that is called an offers analysis. So what is OFFERS? Well basically is a checklist. OFFERS is an acronym and so each of the letters in OFFERS stands for something and serves to remind you about um, the different things you need to think about when you're defining your problem. So the O is the first one and that is the objective. What is the objective that we want to achieve in solving this problem? The first of the F's stands for functions. What is it that needs to be done? What, what functions do we need to fulfill to support the achievement of our first objective? Factors. What are the important factors surrounding this problem and how do they um, influence uh, the function and the objectives? Effects. Say we did come up with a really good solution, what is the impact of this solution going to have on the wider community and the wider, wider business environment? In the picture examples I'm showing here, we have a satellite and that is one possible effect that you might anticipate um, from coming up with a space program and sending a man to the moon. But there may be several other effects or outcomes that you don't necessarily anticipate, including such things as a space pen or space food sticks. Requirements. How is our achievement to be measured? What will tell us if we've done a good job and that we've actually met our objective? Specifications. This is where we basically put numbers to our requirements. So if we say something must be low cost, in specifications we would say it has to be less than $10 for instance. Or in the case of um, the picture shown up here, if we say that the requirement is our astronaut must not pass out due to the g-forces he's exposed to, the specification might be a 2G acceleration limit on our space shuttle. So let's take a look at how we define an objective in a little bit more detail. For this objective, we're after a single sentence that defines the aim of our solution. We want to try and identify the real objective of the task. So sometimes people may tell you to do something, um, but maybe their objective is not quite what they've stated. So be sure to have a think about it and ask questions around what the real objective is. In this case, um, we may have some washing that's wet and a clothesline and maybe someone tells us to design a clothes peg. That could be an objective, but perhaps that is too restrictive. Perhaps a better way to define this objective would be to say, hold washing on a horizontal line. Perhaps that's better and clearer. Or maybe uh, if our objective is actually to dry wet clothes while it is raining or when it is raining, then we would come up with a very different solution set. And a peg to hold washing on a line outside might not be a good solution to that problem. We'd be thinking about things like electric uh, tumble dryers. The first F, as I mentioned, is functions. So for functions, we want to start by creating a list of verb-noun pairs. 
that are going to define the necessary functions of our solution. So we start off by just brainstorming some ideas. Some examples, some very general ones, might include lift a load, be reliable, cost less, reduce injury, or even attract buyer. If we come back to our example of the hold washing on a horizontal line, then what are our functions? What are our list of verb noun pairs? They should be pretty easy to come up with. So let's think about it. We've got hold the washing. At some point after the washing's dried, we're going to release it. When we're putting the washing on the line and holding it, we're probably going to have to supply some energy to make that process happen. So we'll put that there. Get the holder is another one. We, uh, it might not just be sitting there on the line, maybe we store it somewhere. And then after we're finished with drying our washing, we, we may want to store the holder. So those are some example functions for this scenario. What we usually do with our functions is to help us understand them, to make sure we haven't missed anything, is that we order them chronologically. For example, in this case, we would start by getting our holder, little arrow, and then we're going to hold the washing and we recall that to do this we need to supply some energy. After we've held the washing and it's dried we're going to release the washing and then we're going to store our holder. So a very simple chronological timeline to remind us of the flow of these functions. If we move now on to the factors let's have a look at the different factors that affect our solution and the way we do this is by coming up with a list of words that start with M to remind us of the different factors and the first one is men or, or women and this is to remind us to think about the human factors involved in any solution that we come up with. Money is a big one so what are the costs associated with the solution? How much will it cost to bring it to market? What are our labour costs? What are our material costs? So the types of technology available, these may be associated technology that work with our solution or they may be manufacturing technology. M for methods, so here we're talking about manufacturing possibly, uh, distribution, recycling, uh, any, any methods that have to do with our solution. Minutes, so time. Uh, speed to market, learning period perhaps that it takes to come to grips with this new invention that we've come up with. And finally, materials. So availability of the materials we might want to use, standardization of the materials, safety of our materials. So those are the six M's that we think about when we try to list off the different factors that are going to affect our solution. So if we look now at our example of holding washing on a horizontal line again, and we think about what are the factors surrounding men and women um, relevant to this problem. We would want something that is to be used by adults and children and the elderly. And I've put a picture here showing possible arthritis pain. So we, we have to think about um, people who might be slightly impaired in their motor skills and come up with a solution that they're going to be quite happy using. In terms of money, we want to insist that um, our solution is going to be very inexpensive per item held on the line. There are some pegs around potentially that have some advanced features like USB keys that would be um, outside what we would want to design because that would be too expensive. In terms of machines, we want um, manually operated, so we don't want to have an additional machine to be out like a stapler to be able to staple our washing to the line. Uh, we want it to be safe as well. So here's an example showing that pegs are relatively safe around humans. In terms of methods, we're thinking regional manufacturing and local selling. And for minutes, we want it to be quick to hold and release and no training required. Here's a very complicated clothes peg that I found online. And you might look at that and find it uh, a bit hard to understand but if you actually picked it up and tried to use it you would find it quite intuitive and so there is no, no actual training required for the users to use this peg despite its complexity. 
And finally, materials. Obviously, we're thinking non-toxic, um, something that children could potentially chew on and not be harmed by, and also non-damaging to our fabrics. So we wouldn't want to have a peg that had a whole lot of steel pressed against um, our fabric if, it's, if the fabric is wet, uh, which would then rust and, and get into our nice clean clothes. So those are our factors for this example. So, so far we've covered the objective, the function, and the factors, and this is the first half of our office analysis, and this is where we've basically got to. For any analysis, office analysis that you would conduct, you would follow a pretty similar process. In the next video, uh, problem definition two, we're going to cover effects, requirements, and specifications to complete our office analysis. Thanks for watching.